Okay, so in this video we're going to go over how to do a live stream using Wirecast. Um, usually if you're just doing a one-off event or you only do live streaming every once in a while, you probably don't need this, but if your organization tends to do a lot of live events that you want to stream, then Wirecast is definitely something that you should probably look into. Uh, to create an event, you do the same thing you do with the Google uh, Hangouts on Air. You go to your page, you select Create Live Event, um, and, but this time, I mean, you, we'll put in like the description and the name, but this time we're going to go to Custom Encoding. Um, what this will do is once we create our live event, it's going to give us an option called Ingestion Settings. Um, so when you're doing Google on Air, what it's actually doing is your computer is doing all the encoding and then it's sending that to the internet. Um, so you may not always get the best quality and there may be a, quite a bit of delay because you're having to send the stuff to Google and then Google is having to create the video. In this case, all the encoding is happening on your computer and then your computer is just sending the finished stream up to YouTube. So it's a bit faster and it's a bit better quality because you're not losing anything in, tra in transit. Um, Wirecast can be a little expensive, um, so it is not for everyone, but for those who want sort of the fancy tools, Wirecast is a good option. Um, and and as, as an add-on to this, if you're going to go this route, you should probably also have um, an external webcam. Uh, the first thing you'll do is you'll pick a thumbnail uh, just so that when you advertise the live stream, um, it has something to show other than sort of the dot, dot, dot that you see as the default setting. Um, you don't have to, but it's nice to have. So the other thing I want to talk about is this uh, bitrate option. Uh, the bitrate option you'll have to play around with. If you have a fast computer and you're on gigabit internet and you feel like you're very comfortable with this, Go 1080p. Um, I usually, when I'm on location, will go 480p because I don't always think I have the fastest internet. Um, the danger is that if you choose a bit rate higher than what your internet connection will handle, you'll have some buffering issues and YouTube will yell at you. Um, so to be safe, it's always safer to go lower, but if you've tested it and you feel you can go 1080p, go for it. Um, you have a HD webcam, might as well use it. Um, I also want to point out that if you're doing the, the webcast, you definitely want to be connected to the internet through an ethernet cable. Um, otherwise, if you're trying to do this over Wi-Fi, it doesn't always work quite as well. Um, there are other ways to uh, do this besides Wirecast. Uh, so it does give you that option. I tend to go to Wirecast because it's something we've used and something we trust. So you can use another product if you want. We use Wirecast. But once you've set up your encoder, um, actually in order to get Wirecast, you pretty much have to go to this page. Um, they don't advertise it very well on the site. Um, we've included the link in our blog post. Um, it should take you to the site. It is a little bit pricey. I know they have a free version on the site, but the free version has a sort of a watermark that sort of advertises itself, and it's really difficult to use in terms of like actually live streaming something. Uh, so if you're going to do it, you might as well buy it. Um, it is an investment, um, but it is different than just the normal Wirecast. The normal Wirecast... Uh, sometimes can cost up to twice as much as Wirecast for YouTube. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, but once you download it, it's pretty simple install. Um, it's um, per, good. It doesn't, it isn't too big a file. Uh, once you get it installed, um, you can set up YouTube to say, hey, this is my encoder. Um, once you set it up, you now have a live control room. Now, when you go to the live control room, it's going to immediately yell at you that it can't find your stream. This is normal because we haven't started Wirecast yet. So, this is Wirecast. I've opened it up, and you see 
and it's kind of pretty intimidating looking. Uh, it's got a lot of buttons and uh, so we're just going to go over it a little bit. The very first time you'll want to do some changes, uh, the first thing is that when you go to layout, you can take out the preview and then when you go to uh, this setting, you're going to want to make it uh, auto live. Uh, there's not really a point in sort of having a preview when you're doing live stream. So the next thing we're going to want to do is to uh, set up our Wirecast to talk to YouTube. So there's a little gear box next to uh, record. We're going to click that, choose YouTube as our output setting, hit OK, and then it's going to have us authenticate uh, that we which YouTube account we want to use. It'll automatically pop open the browser. We're going to choose Smart Chicago. It's going to ask if it's, if it's okay for Wirecast to interact with YouTube. That's fine. Uh, once we do that, um, now it's connected to YouTube and it'll automatically find the event that we're looking for. Um, if you're running more than one event, you can use this button to sort of pick which one. Normally, you can just leave it as is. Um, we'll hit OK. So to the next thing that we're going to want to do is start creating shots. So you see right now it's using one of my external webcams as a shot. If I want to make it go away, I can click blank shot and it'll fade to black. Um, so if you've ever been on the news and you see the little um, newscast with the um, little text that says who they are, you can actually do that with Wirecast. You go to add shot, edit shot, then it'll bring up this text box. Uh, we're going to go view page view. We're going to hit the T button and then we're going to select one of these graphics to use. We're going to hit the T button and um, I mean it gives you a lot of options but to customize it um, we can go to this T box up there. Hold on. Let me go at this again. Okay, so we can use this T box to add text to our graphic. Uh, the first line I usually do like a hashtag for the event or the name of the event. Um, second line I usually just put my name. Uh, third line I'll put my organization, uh, Smart Chicago Collaborative. Um, I can exit out at this point, and now I have a cry on. So if I'm, you know, I'm using my video, I can add my name. It shows up at the bottom, just like it does on news broadcast. If I want it to go away, I click uh, the blank shot up at the top, and it goes away. Now it does take a little bit of work, so I can do duplicate shot to repeat everything I just did. So I don't have to go and search through all the settings again. Uh, makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to put uh, guest tonight, and then I can just switch between cryons just like that. Um, it's pretty nifty. Um, the other thing that uh, Wirecast can do is a social media shot. So to do a social media shot, we're you're going to sign into Wirecast with our YouTube, with our Twitter account and then set it up to pull messages from our Twitter account. So we're going to go to social, uh, going to go to settings, or we're going to go to add social media shot and it's you see the little Twitter icon and that's what it's going to look like. So we're going to go to settings, sign in, And it's going to give us a couple of options as to what to pull from. I can pull from my own Twitter feed. I can pull from my favorites. Uh, I usually do search and then search for a hashtag of my event. Uh, that way I can pull not only from my own Twitter, but pretty much anybody who's um, tweeting the same hashtag. Um, when I do this, it's going to open up a uh, message feed. So here's a couple of tweets. If I click on one of these tweets, it'll show up on the graphic. Um, the Wirecast is set up to automatically um, refresh. Uh, you can do it manually. Um, to make them go away, you just hit blank screen 
or blank shot and it'll go away. Um, so when we're ready to stream, we can click this stream button and then it's going to send whatever's going through the video to YouTube. Um, and this will pretty much happen instantaneously. You'll see you, uh, Wirecast will give you stats on your connectivity, uh, the CPU usage, uh, what your frames per second is, and that just lets you know that your stream is healthy. Uh, so that said, we're going to go back to YouTube, and you see that it's receiving our stream, and it's um, if we hit that button, it's going to let us preview, and then it's going to give us the option to preview the stream. You'll see that it says our stream is good. If you have a slower internet connection or your computer starts messing up, you'll see this flash a warning signal, and it'll usually tell you why it's having problems. Uh, to start streaming, we just hit that button, and then when we're done, we'll hit that button again to stop it. Once the stream starts, we can use you, uh, Wirecast, uh, sort of like our own little control room. Um, we can add shots. We can also add more cameras. If you, we hover over that little plus icon, we can add uh, additional webcams. We can even add a desktop preview. Um, we can even uh, add a uh, iPhone app called uh, Wirecast Cam in order to use our iPhone as a second camera. Um, so once you download the app onto your iPhone, you can go to Source, Add Wirecast Cam. It'll give us a dialog asking for the IP address. Uh, you get that from using the Gearbox on settings on the iPhone app. You plug that in and you'll have a second camera. And then I usually do if I uh, desktop, uh, just if we're presenting and I want to show something that's on the screen. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then to switch between the two or three different camera angles, uh, you just click the box that you want to be active. Um, think of the bars as a giant sandwich. Um, the higher the bars, that stuff goes on top. And so I can choose any of my cameras. I can choose the feed or the graphic to go on top of it, and that'll show up. Uh, so that's Wirecast. Um, I would definitely um, take about an afternoon to um, play around with it and get used to it because it does, it does take some getting used to, but it's definitely worth um, the investment. The one other thing I wanted to show you is that if you go into your video manager, you can actually download an MP4 of your live stream recording. Um, the live stream recording actually shows up almost instantaneously. Um, I will use this whenever, uh, I usually use this after the fact so I can use iMovie to edit the movie, um, clean up the audio a little bit and give it some, uh, clean it up a little bit, and that's pretty useful. Uh, other than that, you should be good to go.